Hi everyone and welcome back to our 12 part series on life to the full. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Mark Doyle and I'm the Executive Director of Net Ministries based here in beautiful Brisbane, Australia. This series is based on the scripture John 10.10 10, that goes something like this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. It's this full life, it's this abundant life that everyone wants, that every single person dreams about, I think. But too often in our lives, we find that this is really difficult, or we find that we're not actually that happy with our lives. We find that we're just going through the motions on autopilot, doing the same thing day in and day out, so that we feel like we're stuck in a rut. Now, the key to getting out of this rut, the key to moving through your life in such a way that you're fully alive rather than kind of half dead or <laughs> in a mediocre way, is this idea of full life. And throughout this series, I have proposed that life to the full is based on three things. The first one is a deep understanding of your true identity, of who you actually are, of what your nature is and where your value comes from. As Christians, we believe that we have been made in God's image and therefore we reflect Him. And it's this reflection, it's this being made like God that gives us such incredible worth and dignity as human beings. The second aspect is a passionate pursuit of your unique purpose. I believe that you have been made to do something special, to do something unique, to do something that no one else can do. And we used an acronym called SHAPE to help us take a look at what our unique purpose just might be. We then broke open this idea of calling, that we are called to live for a purpose greater than ourselves, that we are called to be a means to an end rather than an end, that, that God gives us a specific thing to do that is going to build up His kingdom or build up His church. And that it's in doing precisely that thing that you are going to find the most abundant life. The third area of life to the full is this aspect of living your life on purpose. It's, it's an art, it's not a science, but this whole idea that we can consciously, intentionally, proactively form and shape our lives through the choices, through the decisions that we make and the way that we live our lives so that they reflect the life that we want to be living, so that they reflect our vision, our preferred picture of the future and what we think it should look like. So in the last few episodes, that's exactly what we've been doing, is talking about living your life on purpose and how to do this day in and day out. How do I live my daily life in such a way that it's in alignment with the big picture vision that I'm trying to live. So we spoke about ways to cast a compelling vision and how to make your vision stick. We spoke about setting goals and I gave you an acronym called SMART, which is really gonna help you set some effective goals. Then in the last episode, we were talking about this idea of discipleship. This idea that as followers of Christ, that we are His students. And then each and every day we come before him to ask him, how should I live my life today? And so we intentionally invite Christ into all aspects of our lives. And I particularly mentioned five different F's of different areas of your life where you can intentionally and proactively invite Christ into to allow him to be a part of your life in a deeper way. We then spoke about some principles of discipleship. And the first principle that I was talking about is this idea of agency, that you are in control of your life and that you can make decisions because God has given you free will. So he's allowed you to make a decision that says, not only do I want to follow you, not only do I want to be your student, Jesus, but actually I want to be you. I want to become more like you. So that's the principle number one, which is about making decisions. Principle number two was about developing habits that help us to naturally and instinctively 
live our lives in this way. The power of a habit is that it's your autopilot. It's where you go to when you're not thinking. So if you have shaped your habits in such a way that they're helping you to live the life that you want to live, you have gone a long ways towards living this intentional life and therefore to having this fullness and this abundance of life that Jesus is speaking about. We're going to continue on that same track for a while today, which is into the third principle of discipleship. And then we're going to talk about renewal of the mind. But let's start with this third principle of discipleship. The third principle of discipleship is to manage your time according to your values. Now, if you're not exactly sure what your values are, I think there's a pretty easy way to find out. In fact, there's two things that I would look at if I was going to try to figure out what your values might be. The first one is how do you spend your time? What are the things that you do with your time? Because time is the most precious resource that we've been given. We all know that time is the most precious asset that you have. It's the most valuable thing that you've been given. So what you choose to do with your time tells me a lot about what you think is important. The second place that I would go looking is into your bank account. Where do you spend your money? I think that we all think through carefully most of the time the purchases that we make, what we do with our money. And that quickly tells me what's important to you. Do you like to go out and spend your time helping other people? Or do you like to go out and spend your time doing things more for yourself? Do you like to go out and and spend your money on food? Or do you go out and spend your money on clothing? or on vehicles, or on cars, or on sports. Where you spend your money and your time is the easiest and quickest way for you to figure out, what are my values? Then the next part of this principle is about setting up a time management system that allows you to make sure that you're living your life in line with those values. Now, the easiest place for me to manage this is through my calendar. You know, I've got my iPhone, and in there I've got my calendar, And in there, you can see all of the appointments that I have throughout my day. Now, it was a moment of revelation for me when I was challenged by someone who was speaking when they said, I want you to look at your calendar. I want you to look at the last month of your life and ask yourself, where has most of my time gone? And it was incredible to me how much of my time had gone to things that I actually wouldn't consider that important. I was... I was a bit moved by this. In fact, I thought, I really need to find a way to change this. I need to become more intentional about how I'm living my life because so much of my energy feels like it's being wasted doing these things that aren't that important. And you may find yourself in a similar situation where you realize, hey, the life that I'm living right now doesn't actually look the way that I want it to look. That's okay. That's exactly what time management is meant to help you do. I was also moved when the speaker was talking about this idea of, well, If you put in your work appointments, where are the other things that should actually be more important to you? Where do you find those things? And for me at that time in my life was the truth was, you couldn't find them anywhere. Although I had laid out in my work calendar neatly all of my appointments that were there to help me do my work and to do it really efficiently and effectively, in my personal life and in my work, in my life outside of work, that just wasn't the case. These other things that I gave lip service to that I said were so important to my life, things like my faith and my family, actually weren't taking up any time in my calendar. I actually didn't have any appointments blocked out about those things. And the truth was that I could have been living my life a lot more effectively in those places. So I've reached the point now where I do things a bit differently. I've reached the point now where I ask myself a few different questions before I say yes to anything. Going back about 10 years, if you'd asked me, hi Mark, could you help me with this or could you do that? The truth is I'd probably just say yes before I even thought about it. I have a real heart for helping people and for serving them. And so I just wanted to do that. So saying yes was easy. But now I find that my life is so full. It has so many different things going on then now every single thing that I do has to go through a different lens. It has to go through a few questions before I can say yes to it. And that is, is this activity congruent with my vision? Is this activity in line with the goals that I've set? Is this activity going to make me into the man that I desire to become, which is a man like Christ? 
or is this activity going to take me away from that place? Is it going to move me and lead me in a different direction? Now, if the activity isn't in line with any of those things, I know quickly and simply now that I need to say no. And that's the importance of knowing your vision. And that's the importance of having values, of knowing what is important to you. Because if you know what's important to you, you can set your priorities. You know what's important. And then you can open your calendar and you can look at it each day and go, is this day, have I shaped it to reflect my priorities? So for me, one of the things that's really important is my faith. So in my calendar and in my daily ritual, every day I try to have some time to pray, some moments where I can be intimate with God and where I can speak to Him about everything that's going on for me. I also try to have time every day where I do some exercise. Being fit is important to me and taking care of my body is important to me. So every day I try to do something towards my fitness. Personal growth is really important to me. I want to be someone who is constantly growing, who is constantly striving to be the man that God has created me to be. And some really cool ways that I've found uh, about doing this is, is mainly through learning. So what I love to do every day is to just read something or to write something, to listen to a podcast, to provide myself with some kind of encouragement or something that's going to challenge me to live my life even more effectively than I am right now. So by knowing your values and knowing what you want to set out to do on that day, which for me is to do something about my face, do something about fitness, for me to grow and develop as a person and, and to continue to be inspired, I know that I need to build habits and rituals around those things so that I'm doing those things every day. But it all comes back to my values. You can have a really well-oiled machine, a schedule that's jam-packed from one thing to the next and perfectly timed. But if the things, if the activities that you're doing aren't actually important to you, then it doesn't matter. And this is why this principle about values and time management is so important. If you find that you don't have enough time to do things, if you find that in your life it's too busy, it's too packed, I can't squeeze it all in, how do you possibly fit all of those things into your life, Mark? Well, this is what I would say. So if you feel like there's too many things to do, it's too jam-packed. So this is a quote from author Lin Yu Tang, who says, besides the noble art of getting things done, is the noble art of leaving things undone. And that just makes so much sense to me. The truth is that if there are too many things, you need to cut some things out. And how do you know what to cut out? Well, that's based on your values and that is based on your priorities and what is important to you. So your values provide you with this filter in which to decide what should I do and what should I leave undone. So I know what really matters to me in my life. I've had to figure it out the hard way by going through this process for a long time of refining and refining and refining. And the truth is, I still don't have it all down. There's still so many days in my life that go by where I feel like, there was more that I could have gotten from that. It had a greater potential to be something better. Or that was just, ah, that was a pretty mediocre day that I just had. So if you're feeling that way yourself, don't worry. You don't need to be discouraged. Just pick yourself back up. Have another go the next day. Wake up tomorrow and say, How, what can I do today to live my life in line with my values? The other thing that I would say is if you have too many things going on, you may need to look at this idea of delegation, which is, what can I not do by giving this to someone else? Now, particularly in organizational life, or maybe even in family life, this concept can be really helpful. You know, Renee and I are often very busy and there's so many things that we need to do. So it's easy for us to come to our oldest son, Ethan, a lot and to say, hey, Ethan, do you mind doing this? Can you do this little chore around the house? Can you clean that up? Can you get your brother and sister a glass of water? Little things like that that are really helpful. And so delegating to him has been a, you know, an important part of the solution that we have. In organizational life, as a leader perhaps, this looks a lot like asking yourself the question, what can only I do? And if there are things that other people can do, just get, get them off your to-do list. Give them to someone else. Delegate them so that they can do it. 
So we find ourselves now at a place where we've been talking a lot about vision and strategy and goals and habits and discipline. But all of these things are really hard. Like all of these things require me to change my behavior. And behavior modification is so difficult. Breaking old habits, getting rid of things that are holding us back. This is not easy. And if it was, we would already be there at life to the full. We'd already stop doing the things that we don't want to do, but we haven't. And it's because it's hard. So for the rest of this episode, I want to talk to you about something called renewal of the mind, which is a concept that St. Paul speaks to us about in the scriptures. And it's based on the simple principle that if we want to change our behavior, if we want to do behavior modification, then we need to change the way we think. It's only when we change the way that we think that we can change our behavior. So let's listen to what St. Paul has to say about renewal of the mind. So let's take a look at what St. Paul has to say about renewal of the mind in the second chapter of his letter to the Corinthians. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So St. Paul talks to us about renewing our minds, about taking every single thought that we have and making it captive to Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first stumbled upon this concept, I thought, that, that's not true. I can't control every thought that I have. I can't take every thought captive to Christ. Thoughts just pop into my head. They just happen. But the truth is, like everything else in our life, we can think intentionally. We can control our thoughts. And when we find ourselves thinking in a way that is negative or that is toxic or that isn't leading us to behave in the way that we want to, we can change it. Again, this is some really hard work. This is hard yakka, as they would say in Australia. It is really difficult to do, but it is possible. And for me personally, I have found so much freedom in my life through this process. So I'd encourage you, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're in a rut and you don't know how to change your behavior, try to apply these principles of the renewal of the mind and see what happens for you. So the first principle of renewal of the mind that we need to do or that we need to think about is simply to become aware of our thoughts. We need to think about the way that we think, if you want to say it that way. It's something called metacognition. And metacognition is just all about awareness. It's about becoming aware of my own thought life. So how do I think? When do I think and what do I think about? Am I having negative thoughts about other people? Am I having things that are leading me down the wrong path? Thoughts that are taking me astray? Or am I thinking really positively? Am I thinking good things about other people? Am I seeing their strengths rather than their weaknesses? But the first step is for us to become aware. What are the thoughts that are happening in my head? The second thing that we need to do is to hold these thoughts up to the light. We need to look at them and examine them closely. And to do this, I would ask a few simple questions. The first question that I would ask is, is this true? For me, I have found that I have come to think about so many things in my life that are actually not true. In fact, they're lies. They're things that are not even true. And these thoughts lead me down a path into worry, into being afraid, into feeling insecure, into feeling a lack of confidence. All of the things that I don't want to feel that lead me to act in a way that I don't want to act. The second question you should ask yourself is, is this thought productive? So many times in our life, we go through it thinking things that aren't helping anything, stressing about things that we can't change, or worrying about things that are going to have no impact on the big picture. So we need to take the time to ask ourselves a few of these questions about the thoughts that we're having so we can figure out, is this productive, is this helpful, and is this true? If your answer to any of these things is no, then what you need to do is go on to the next step, which is all about replacement. 
replacing that thought that is a lie or replacing that thought that is not productive with a thought that is true. And more importantly, a thought that is centered on scriptural truth, a thought that is centered on Christ. So for example, if you're in the middle of something difficult, if you're, if you're working through a difficult project, or let's say you're in a difficult relationship, with your spouse at that particular time, with someone in your family, in a relationship with someone at work, and you find yourself thinking negative thoughts about them. You need to pause and stop and go, man, I'm, I'm becoming aware of this and I'm really not happy with the way that I'm thinking right now. Number two, you need to break open and evaluate that thought and go, this is negative, this isn't helping anything and it's not productive. Then number three, come to that thought and go, how can I replace that with something that is healthy and Christ-centered? So instead of thinking, I'm so annoyed with that person, I'm so frustrated with them, why do they always do that thing? Instead, you could think something like, I'm becoming frustrated when they do that, but I know that there are so many great things about this person, and that's just not their particular area of strength. Recognizing that they're human and acknowledging the fact that they're not perfect, just like you, is gonna help you to deal with that frustration much more easily rather than getting all worked up and thinking the same thought over and over and over again. That's only gonna lead you to frustration and anger and to unhealthy places that you don't wanna go. So those are the three simple steps involved with renewal of the mind. But a few of the other things that I found really helpful in this process is to pray. We need to ask Jesus to give us the strength to help us to do this. It is not something that we can accomplish without Him. We need Him to be there. We need Him to be a part of our lives. So we need to ask Him to help us to renew our minds. We can say a simple prayer like, Jesus, I realize that this thought is not helpful or that it's unhealthy. Can you please help show me through the power of your Holy Spirit the truth about this situation? Can you please speak your truth into this lie that is holding me back? So for example, you might have a thought that's something like, I am so unworthy. Well, we know that that's not true. We know in fact that the truth that scripture tells us that you are more than a conqueror and that you have been made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore you have such incredible worth and such incredible goodness that is inside of you. So being able to read scripture and being able to use scripture to replace the lies that we have come to believe is something that can really be transformative for us. So try and find some specific scriptures that speak into those areas where you've noticed you're really struggling. Find some scriptures, if you're struggling with your own self-worth, that speak to you about your great identity and your great value. If you're struggling to feel hopeful, find scriptures that speak about hope. If you're struggling to be charitable with others, find places in scripture where you're encouraged to give of yourself. Find parables or stories that resonate with you, that you can use to replace those negative thoughts in your life. Scripture is such a powerful weapon. It tells us that it is a sharp edged sword and we can use scripture to cut through the negative thoughts, to bring the truth back into our life. And as we go about this process every day, inviting Jesus to change our thoughts and to renew our mind, we will find that we will become more and more like Him. We'll find that those behaviors or those habits or those things that were holding us back, that gradually over time, we become free of them. The truth is that this is not a, a snap of the fingers thing. This is not a pill that we can swallow that instantly changes us. The truth about renewal of the mind is that it is a long process. It is a process that can sometimes take weeks or months or years. But I'm here to tell you that it's worth it. It is worth it to renew your mind because as your mind is changed, you will become free. You will become more and more the man or woman that God created you to be. You'll be more free to love those around. You'll be more free to love yourself. And renewal of the mind is the key. It's the capstone. It's the thing that will unlock your true potential and allow you to become the person that you can truly become. So I want to encourage you. I want to invite you. Renew your mind through the power of the scriptures. 
Come back to the truth. When you find yourself lost, when you're feeling confused, go to the truth. Change your thinking. And as you change your thinking, so too will your behavior change and you will become more like Christ. Thank you so much for inviting me into your homes tonight. I want to continue to walk with you as we journey towards a life to the full. In the next episode, we're going to be speaking about some obstacles, some challenges, some things that get in the way of us living our lives to the full. Just as we've talked about some of those obstacles today and about how renewal of the mind can help us, in the next episode, we're going to find some more keys and some more principles to becoming the person that we were meant to be. Thank you again for inviting me into your homes. Good night and God bless. A lot of talk in our church today about the new evangelization. And we might ask, well, what's new about the new evangelization? One thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be Catholic, should already be Christian. Individuals, families, communities, whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel. And so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith, of evangelization. Another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that. And the new media, and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today. Shalom World. God's own channel.